Hello, I'm Rebecca Barnes and welcome to the Science at ESA vodcast. In 1989, Europe launched the first spacecraft to chart the positions of the stars. During a mission lasting just over three years, Hipparchus mapped over 100,000 stars with very high accuracy. Despite the wealth of data delivered by Hipparchus, fundamental questions about our galaxy remain. In the night sky, the Milky Way can be seen as a band of dust and gas that obscures the view of the galactic centre at visible wavelengths. Studies of other galaxies have shown that the structure of the Milky Way should be in the form of a disk, a central bulge and a halo. Astronomers are sure that our galaxy's disk has a spiral shape, but how the arms formed and exactly how many there are remains unclear. To really see the structure of the Milky Way, astronomers need to observe a much larger sample of stars that cover the entire spatial extent of the galaxy. The Hipparchus mission only saw a tiny fraction of stars in the Milky Way and was limited to a region around the solar system, therefore not enough to lead astronomers to conclusive results. More stars at greater distances need to be mapped. ESA is continuing to build upon the European heritage of astrometry and the legacy of Hipparchus with Gaia, a new European mission that is due to launch early in the next decade. Gaia will be able to detect much fainter stars and provide more accurate parallaxes than the Hipparchus mission. Gaia will therefore, over its five-year lifespan, be able to study one billion stars in the Milky Way and beyond to make the largest and most precise three-dimensional map of our galaxy. To make this colossal study, the Gaia spacecraft will have two optical telescopes which will focus light onto one enormous focal plane, feeding three instruments. The astrometric instrument will detect stars as they cross the field of view, giving astronomers the star position, proper motion, and parallax. The photometric instrument will collect information about the star's color and brightness, and the radio velocity spectrometer will provide astronomers with spectra of the star in order to determine how fast it is moving towards or away from us. To achieve the precise and accurate measurements that will be needed, the Gaia payload must remain mechanically and thermally ultra-stable. This is achieved by using a special ceramic material to construct the payload and by shielding the payload with a large sun shield that will be unfolded after launch. Guy will collect an immense amount of data. In the order of a petabyte, that's one million gigabytes. This will all need to be stored and processed. To achieve this tremendous task, hundreds of people from many disciplines, including astronomers, software engineers, mathematicians and computer specialists spread all over Europe form the Data Processing and Analysis Consortium. This consortium will work together throughout the lifetime of the mission to process the data and for three years afterwards to then unite the data into a single entity, the Gaia Catalogue, which is expected to be finalised around 2020. This is a huge scientific and logistical challenge. The enormous yield of data obtained by Gaia will have a revolutionary impact across astronomy. As photons of light from celestial objects travel through our solar system, they are deflected by the gravitational influence of the sun, planets, moons, and minor bodies. This is the general relativistic bending of light. How much photons are deflected depends on how closely they pass an object and the object's mass. Measuring and correcting for this effect is critical when determining accurate positions of stars. Gaia will follow the bending of light through the solar system and therefore directly observe the structure of space-time with unprecedented precision. Gaia's sensitive instruments have the ability to detect faint and fast-moving objects. This makes it possible to detect and study the properties and motions of hundreds of thousands of asteroids, comets and other minor bodies in the solar system, including those that pass near to Earth. 
Gaia will join Herschel and Planck at the second Lagrange point and from there will be ideally situated to probe the asteroid blind spot between the Sun and Earth. Further from home, Gaia will be able to detect tens of thousands of planets orbiting stars other than the Sun, as well as measure the orbital characteristics of a significant number of known extrasolar planets. Gaia will make accurate direct parallax measurements of indirect distance indicators, such as CFID variable stars. This information will have a major impact on knowledge of the distant scale of the universe. Globular clusters, which are among the oldest objects in the Milky Way and found typically in the halo of our galaxy, will be extensively observed by Gaia. Measurements of their distance will enable astronomers to precisely determine their age and hence refine the lower age limit of the universe. Gaia will make a complete census of one billion stars across the entire sky with the same suite of instruments. This doesn't mean that just a large number of stars are surveyed in detail. It means that all different types of stars will be studied, including those that are extremely short-lived or rare, and each star will be seen many times whilst the census is being made. Another unique feature of Gaia will be the well-defined sampling of tens of millions of variable stars and tens of millions of binary star systems. Above all, Gaia's large survey of the stars will reach out to vast distances across not only the disk of the Milky Way, but also into the halo. For the first time, astronomers will be able to see the actual structure of our galaxy and the distributions of the stars within, from which a three-dimensional map of the Milky Way can be made. With this crucial information about the shape of our galaxy, the precise positions, parallax distances, radial velocities and proper motions of one billion stars, Gaia will provide astronomers with enough data to reveal the history of our galaxy. These data will be modelled to trace the paths of the stars back in time to learn more about the formation of the Milky Way and also to advance time to discover how our galaxy will evolve over hundreds of millions of years in the future. I'm Rebecca Barnes. Thank you for watching the Science at Ether podcast.